taking care of business today, it's Dan Walker. Good afternoon, we welcome BBC One viewers to Final Score. We are digesting all the afternoon's football in the company of Gary Pallister and Mark Bright, who are keeping a very close eye on what is a, a bananas afternoon so far. Let's get cracking and start in the Premier League. Eight games in the Barclays Premier League today, and at Upton Park... ...pulled to pieces, and Hernandez, the substitute, made it worse with the fourth goal in the 84th minute. All of which means that West Ham are still down there struggling, and that Manchester United, just for a few hours anyway, are eight points clear. Let's bring you up to date with uh, the other games in the Barclays Premier League so far this afternoon. Birmingham City 2, Bolton 1, Kevin Phillips and Craig Gardner. El Manda getting one back for the away side there. Uh, Darren Bent has got a double for Aston Villa away at Everton this afternoon. They're in real trouble at the bottom of the table. Two crucial goals from Darren Bent. Newcastle 3. Wolves won so far. The Magpies cruising at St James's Park. Kevin Nolan, Shola Amiobi and Peter Lovenkrantz with their goal. Sylvan Ebanks, Blake getting one back for Mick McCarthy's team. Uh, Stoke won, Chelsea won at the moment. Plenty of woodwork action in that game. And Fernando Torres started on the bench. He's now on this afternoon. Nicholas Anelka coming off for Chelsea, chasing Arsenal and Manchester United at the top. West Brom won, Liverpool won. Chris Brunt's penalty for West Brom. Uh, Martin Skirtle got the opener for Liverpool. And we told you about West Ham, Manchester United and Wigan nil. Tottenham nil, no goals at the DW Stadium so far. Uh, gents, first of all, what a goal, what a game at Upton Park we had earlier on today. Game of two halves. <laughs> <laughs> it really, I mean, West Ham just started off the game so well. Uh, Manchester United just, for all the possession they had, never really created anything. Um, change uh, the tactics at half time, take Ever off, put Ryan Giggs at left back amazingly. And then Des comes on, they start to get a goal back, he started to be a bit more happy, <laughs> two goals, and then that was it. It was all Manchester United. And mm. for me, I think that's the, that's the hat trick that gets Rooney back into the season. I think uh, Gary Pallister certainly did enjoy the afternoon. I think you were going to strain your back at one stage, uh, celebrating yeah. those Manchester United goals. Yeah, well, they've done it so many times this season, haven't they? It looks as though they're going to lose points or only get a draw or whatever, and come back so strongly towards the end of games. And I think it was 65 minutes when they, when they got back into it, the 2-1. 15-minute hat-trick from Wayne yeah, Rooney. And, then, and, and that really does put the pressure yeah, on I mean, the others. It, it Let's super. find out how Chelsea are getting on this afternoon, because they're away at Stoke, and Ivan Gaskell can bring us up to date. Yes, uh, a quarter of an hour left, a quarter of an hour left as I speak, Stoke go close, a typical trademark long throw from Delap. the header goes powering just wide and that's been the story of this second half, you know Chelsea's title ambitions hanging by the thinnest of threads here behind thanks to John Walters' fine solo effort early on, level with Didier Drogba's fabulous first half header. But Stoke turning the screw with vigour in this second half. Petr Cech's kept Chelsea in it, really, with some fantastic saves. Stoke have twice struck the woodwork. Drogba's shaved the post at the other end. Torres has risen from the bench to join him. Can he get off the mark to win it for Chelsea? That's the big question. They're running out of time, 1-1. Uh, before the West Bromwich Albion Liverpool game, the talk was all about Roy Hodgson. Let's find out what's happening on the pitch today. Andrew James is at the Hawthorns. Yes, a good friendly handshake between him and Kenny Dalglish before the game, uh, Dan. But really, it's all been about uh, other things. West Brom had lost nine consecutive games against Liverpool prior to this one. They look okay now, though. They've got it back to 1 1. The penalty in the second half scored by Chris Brunt, and Brunt just fires a shot wide. In fact, Rayner saves there. It was a second half penalty for Albion after Liverpool. Liverpool had gone in front from Skirtle's header soon after the restart. Prior to that, Andy Carroll could have seen red in the first half for two yellow cards, but got away with it from uh, Martin Atkinson. It's been a good game, and West Brom looking to extend their unbeaten run to six. It's 1-1. Uh, second equaliser for Dundee United away at Ibrox today, taking on Rangers. Bristol City, a goal up as well at home against Doncaster. We'll have news from Ibrox in a moment. But uh, Spurs, they go to Real Madrid next week. Today, though, they are at Wigan, and Harry Gration is watching them. Well, down at the moment, this scoreline is not really any use for either side, is it? But Spurs are just beginning to come into the game now after an indifferent performance for 70 minutes or so. Crouch is a real threat. He's had a couple of chances already. But let's uh, not uh, forget Wigan. They, too, have been close, and Zogby and Cleverly broke. Both bought to very good saves from Gomez. It's anyone's game yet, but I just think Spurs are on top at the moment. Nil-nil. 
Big goal for Crystal Palace at the bottom of the championship. 2-1 up at home against Barnsley. Mark Bright is celebrating. You probably can't see him on camera at the moment. Uh, Bristol Rovers, <laughs> um, a goal up away at Yeovil. Crew 7, look at that. Cheltenham 1, Joel Grant uh, getting yet another goal for Crew. And Norwich chasing QPR, second place in the championship at the moment. Uh, four goals to the good. A hat-trick for Grant Holt there this afternoon against Scunthorpe. We're going to go to Goodison Park now in the Premier League. Everton, Aston Villa, Richard Askham can bring us the details. Yes, Dan, quite a turnaround in this match at half-time with Everton, a Leon Osman goal to the good. Villa's troubles really looked as though they were increasing, but just when Gerard Houllier needed his team to dig deep, they found the resilience and belief that has turned this match around. They've been a different side this half, zipping the ball about and hunting down lost causes. Stuart Downing, potent throughout, made the equaliser with a run and cross that set up Darren Bent for his first. And then moments after Jermaine Beckford had hit the bar for Everton, Bent struck again with a cool finish, his 16th of the season. Gerard Houllier is looking on nervously down but at the moment his side are on for a crucial three points. Aston Villa started the day just a point ahead of Wolverhampton Wanderers and Mick McCarthy's men are at Newcastle this afternoon and goals are plenty for Steve Sutton. Yes, uh, Dan, it's Newcastle 3, Wolves 1, Newcastle cruising the first half. They led by two goals to one at half-time. Goals from uh, skipper Kevin Nolan and uh, Shola Amiobi just before the break. They came out of the, the, the traps the fastest in the second half, had scored within uh, 50 minutes, a wonderful move leading to uh, a Lovenkrantz goal. But then back came Wolves. They had looked dead and buried, but Ebanks, Blake made it 3-1 just before the hour. Stephen Fletcher missed a gift wrap chance, a header from a few yards out missing the post and Ebanks Blake saw a header from him cleared off the line on 70 minutes it's still Newcastle 3 Wolves 1 though uh, Birmingham Bolton played each other in the FA Cup a few weeks ago they're having another crack at it this afternoon and Steve Lee is at St Andrews Yes, Birmingham 2, Bolton 1 with 12 minutes left. Birmingham leading through goals from Phillips and Garden. We've just seen a sumptuous volley from Johan Omanda that's made this match, certainly the finale, very interesting. Sturridge chesting the ball down, Omanda volleying past Foster, who has been outstanding for Birmingham this afternoon. And Birmingham started so well. 37-year-old Gavin Phillips recalled to the side, scored after four minutes his first Premier League goal of the season, a real marksman's goal that was. Craig Gardner made it two for Birmingham in the second half, playing a lovely 1-2 a give-and-go with Jerome Campbell before firing home his eighth of the season. But uh, now Bolton back into it. They've threatened all afternoon. Now Manda's made it very interesting. We could have a compelling finale. 2-1 Birmingham. Uh, Chelsea have just hit the bar at Stoke. Now, uh, in the SPL today, um, Celtic's game was postponed against Inverness because of a waterlogged pitch. All that meant that Rangers could go top if they beat Dundee United. We've had four goals at Ibrox, but not quite the way Rangers wanted it, Ian Turner. No, it doesn't look as if they're going to be going top. Rangers 2, Dundee United 2, a bulleted diving header from Johnny Russell has set up a cracking last eight minutes to this match. Twice United have come from behind. First of all, Nikita Jelovic scored for Rangers early on. That was cancelled out by David Robertson in the stroke of half-time. Just after half-time Stephen Nes Naismith blasted Rangers back into the lead, but Un United deserve at least a draw out of this game and that Johnny Russell equaliser a moment or two ago has given them the chance of that and they're on the attack again. It's Rangers 2, Dundee United 2. A penalty at Everton, and it's the first penalty that Everton have been awarded all season. Richard Askin can tell us about it. Yes, it is, Dan. Phil Jagielka, of all players, attacking into the box, brought down by Macoon just inside the area. It was given, I think, by the assistant uh, referee just on the right-hand side, and it's going to be taken by Leighton Baines. As you mentioned, Dan, the first penalty that has been awarded to Everton this season. It could be a crucial spot kick as well. Leighton Baines is just standing over the ball at the moment as the referee, Mike Jones, tries to make sure that the Aston Villa players don't encroach into the area. Tim Bradfriedel, apologies, just uh, bouncing up and down on his line. Here comes Baines, left footed. Down the middle of the goal and scores for Everton. And they equalise and it's now Everton 2, Aston Villa 2. A big goal for Dagenham and Redbridge, by the way, um, just above the drop zone in League One. They are a goal up away at Exeter. Um, Mr Bright, Jagielka, dive or no dive? I think it's a dive, but do you know what? <laughs> I think the game balances itself out because I think Everton score earlier. It hits the bar, drops down, it looks like it's over the line, mm. comes back out, isn't given. On this occasion here, though, you have to say, Jagielka, McCoon yeah, comes across. Could be right. I wasn't so sure, but looking at it again from that angle, he could be right. Could have a point. And it's Gary, we were saying in the first half, we didn't see the best of Darren Bent, but he came straight out in the second period and scored two very quick goals yeah, and got Aston Villa into that in the second half, he's, looked, he's played on the, on the shoulder of the last man and, and, and three or four times he's maybe been caught offside, but on the one occasion he, he timed it perfectly, he, he scored a great goal.
Uh, Wayne Rooney scored a very good hat-trick for Manchester United at West, mm. at, uh, West Ham earlier today, but Grant Holt not to be outdone for the team chasing QPR at the top of the Championship. And Norwich Scunthorpe today, Robin Bailey. Yes, it's 5-0 at the moment, Dan. Uh, Holt has got that hat-trick. He is long gone, though, to a standing ovation. It was a terrific hat-trick, including a, a penalty which uh, ended up with Paul Reid being sent off for the challenge that gave him the penalty. So Scunthorpe have been down to 10 men for a long time. But actually, there's another player on a hat-trick now, and that's Simeon Jackson, who only came on as a substitute in the 70th minute. He's got a couple of goals. Uh, the latest one, a really well-worked one with uh, another of the substitutes, Henry Lansbury. So it's 5-0 Norwich. It could easily get higher than this. Norwich cruising and Scunthorpe are heading for their ninth successive away defeat. And that will be a, equaling a club record. Um, not a good start for Mr Nil, the new Scunthorpe boss there. It doesn't get any easier. Next week he goes to QPR. So uh, Norwich first game, QPR second game. Let's find out about the top of the championship as well because Swansea playing this afternoon at Preston. Cardiff at home to Derby. Jason Mohamed has seen some goals this afternoon as well. Yes, Dan, in the week when Cardiff City's chief executive confirmed the club's Malaysian backers will not pull out if the Bluebirds blow promotion again. Craig Bellamy's put in a Premier League performance to boost their chances of making it this season. He won a penalty. Jay Bothroyd scoring his first in 10 minutes from the spot. Almost made it 2-0, but had a shot cleared off the line. Then won a corner, which Deckel Keenan smashed in. Paul Quinn made it four. Then Peter Whittingham volleyed a beauty past Brad Jones. Again, after great work from Craig Bellamy. This is not a match derby Steve Davis will want to watch Dan on the Football League show tonight. One of the worst open goal misses you will ever see. Cardiff City 4, Derby County 0. We always love a shocking miss. OK, Cardiff <laughs> started the day in fourth. And you know, you know we all do. Uh, Swansea started in third. They're away at Preston today. Adam Pope was at deep down. No shocking misses here. Still a great game. Preston won, Swansea won. And now Swansea are trying to win the game by bringing on their Ipswich Loney, Tamas Priskin, to make his debut. Nathan Ellington is on for Preston too. Nobody can find their way through. This result, if it stays this way, no good for Preston, but would end Swansea's losing streak away from home. Uh, now... Brighton in March had a very tidy March. Mr Bright, eight games and how many wins? Eight wins, And done. they started April very nicely as well. Alan Biggs is at Spotland this afternoon watching them take on Rochdale. Oh. Yeah, they've uh, outrun the March hare. Uh, watch out the Easter bunnies, I reckon. Uh, but today it's a tough one for Brighton. It's 2-2 with Rochdale. It's been a terrific game. It's ebbed and flowed. Rochdale took the lead. Will Atkinson turning home in the first half. Chris Wood with a penalty equaliser later in that half after a foul on Brighton's top scorer, Glenn. Murray, then Brighton ahead through Gary Dicker's header early in the second half from across from Bennett. Uh, it could have been uh, saved, I thought, by Fon Williams in the Rochdale goal, rather fumbled it in. But then a penalty at the other end, Chris O'Grady, tower of strength for Rochdale up front, was brought down. Gary Jones slotted in his 19th of the season, and it's all square at 2-2 here. Preston haven't won three straight games for almost two years. Could it be about to change? Late goal, as you can see on the video print of Adam Pope to tell us about. Ian Kume scythed his way through the Swansea defence. He's put himself into double figures with a fine left foot shot. Is it three on the bounce? Are they staying up? Preston two, Swansea one. Oh, uh, what's miss? <laughs> what's, what's, happened? what's happened? What's happened? Chelsea. Uh, what we'll miss for Chelsea? Still got a chance at one end, and Chelsea have gone. Right up the other end, two against four in Stoke's favour, but Chelsea, I think, I'm not sure who's running up there with him, who, got, who has the chance, but... Frank it, Lampard, I think. Is it Lampard? It? Frank, Frank Lampard missed and it, I think, yeah. yeah. I think the keeper saves it. good job it, so you two aren't covering I, the game, because you haven't got a clue. <laughs> 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 yeah. Six right. games going on here, by the way. I know, they, are, they are watching six screens at once, so we'll let them off. Uh, OK, let's uh, pick up on MK Dons away at Southampton. Tony Husband is in St Mary's. Well, we've seen a complete turnaround in this game. Dan, uh, Dons appeared on course to keep their unbeaten away record going. They were two up early in the second period. Gary McKenzie in the first half, added to by Sam Baldock early in the second half. He then went off with what appeared to be an injury. A lot of substitutions from both sides. One of them, Southampton bringing on Jonathan Fort within a couple of minutes as coming on as a substitute. He'd equalised with his first touch. A minute, la a minute later he then levelled at 2-2, having pulled it back to 2-1. And then Lee Barnard, set up by Ricky Lambert, has put Southampton into a 3-2 lead. They would go third if they hold on to this win. Big goal on Ibrox for Ian Turner to tell us about. 
David Goodwillie has snatched all three points for Dundee United in the last minute of the game. Rangers were, were pushing, they hit the bar. Dundee United broke quickly. David Goodwillie ran all the way from the halfway line unchallenged. He drew Alan McGregor. He had one of his own players on his side. He ignored him, slotted at home. Dundee United have twice come back from a goal down. And now, as the referee is all set to kick the game off again, but not for very long, it's Rangers 2, Dundee United 3. That could be a seventh straight win for Dundee United. Impressive to go to Ibrox and win 3-2. If it does, in fact, stay that way. Torquay going well as well. 2-0 up against Lincoln City. We're going to go and pick up exactly what's happening with Chelsea. Uh, these guys have been very interested in it. All sorts of noises throughout the afternoon. <laughs> Ivan Gaskell can tell us that. Well, I can entirely understand that. There's been quite a lot of noise from this end as well. Uh, an exhilarating afternoon. A, a truly uh, first-class advert for the Premier League. Stoke 1, Chelsea 1 is still the score. A couple of minutes of normal time to go, but I suspect there's going to be a few minutes of added time too. Danny Higginbottom went down really heavily on his ankle in a goal mouth scramble just a moment ago, so he's been attended to. At the other end, it really has gone from end to end, but just to clarify, Torres, I felt, showed uh, the air of a, a striker with uh, a little bit of confidence uh, that's lacking at the moment because he went one-on-one -on -one with the defence but uh, opted instead to pass to Lampard, who'd supported him ably. Lampard got a second bite at the cherry deep inside the Stoke penalty area and it was Whitehead, a substitute just five minutes earlier had come on, who showed uh, really... Fantastic determination, and in my view, it was a very good, clean tackle from the side. Penalty claims waved away, and in my view, rightly. But uh, it really has gone end to end. Fantastic, still could go either way. Drama at the Hawthorns. Will Roy Hodgson be celebrating tonight against his old team, Andrew James? Groundhog Day. It's a penalty for West Bromwich Albion to be taken by Chris Brunt after Odin Wingy was brought down in the box, this time by Rayner. And it's into the back of the net from Chris Brunt. Rayner was given a yellow card for his protests. I have to say, from 80 yards away, it looked a bit harsh on the goalkeeper. Odin Wingy once again turned Kyriakos. That was bad from the Liverpool point of view. But when he tried to get past Rayner, Odin Wingy appeared to go over the body of the Liverpool goalkeeper. He was booked for the protests. But with his second penalty of the afternoon, Chris Brunt has put West Bromwich Albion into the lead. And they are on for their first victory against Liverpool in 10 Premier League attempts. 2-1 to Albion. You know, the last time West Brom beat uh, Liverpool was 1981. Oh. Two goals that day. Brian Robson, Brian Robson. and Cyril Regis, Regis got the yeah. goal. Uh, penalty, yay or nay, though, that one? Uh, Gary. I don't think so. I'm not convinced. Pepe Rain is going absolutely up absolutely with, the, with the referee. Do you think it's a stonewall? The pen, <laughs> yeah, the pen's got up. We've got another goal at the Ibrox for Ian Turner. No, oh, it's full time, sorry, all over, it's all, yes, it's, sorry. It's full time. Rangers 2, Dundee United 3. That David Goodwillie goal in the last minute has given United a famous Ibrox victory and has denied Rangers the opportunity to return to the top of the league. Jelovic had given Rangers an early lead. That was cancelled out right in the stroke of half time by David Robertson after a good move from Goodwillie and Swanson. Stephen Naismith for Rangers just after the break. Johnny Russell then equalised for United with a magnificent bulleted header on 77 minutes and then Goodwillie broke away as Rangers pressed for victory. Goodwillie did the damage and he got the victory. Rangers 2, Dundee United 3. So Rangers miss out on the chance to go top. St Mirren against Hamilton, the two teams at the bottom of the SPL. Brian McLaughlin. Yeah, we're going to stop his time now and it's St Mirren 3, Hamilton Aki's won a scoreline that could go a long way to decide who stays in the SPL. Aki's ahead at half-time thanks to a terrific strike by David Buchanan. For the second half, it's been the Michael Higdon show, a perfect hat-trick, equalising with a diving header. Put Saints in head with a right-footed penalty. The best got a thumping left-foot volley high into the roof of the net. Aki's also down to ten men. Martin Canning sent off for a, the challenge on uh, Dargo that led to the penalty. Two minutes left for play. Eight games left for Hamilton. They look like they're going to be nine points adrift at the bottom. St Mirren three, Hamilton Aki's one. A misery for Dagenham and Redbridge. They were a goal up at Exeter. They're just currently above the drop zone in League One. But Exeter, two late goals, and it's Exeter two, Dagenham, Redbridge. Now, um, let's going to pick up on um, Ivan Gaskell, the latest from the Britannia Stadium. Stoke against Chelsea. Can Chelsea get a win, Ivan? Well, at the moment, it's whether they can hang on to a point because Stoke have a chance. Fuller's header across the face of goal. Oh, that was so, so agonisingly close for Stoke City. And that's been the story of the second half, a succession of chances. But to be fair, Chelsea have had their moments too. And I need to mention 
the woodwork yet again, more woodwork than the average secondary school timetable here. Drogba with a fantastic left foot volley that we haven't yet mentioned that thundered against the Stoke Bar. It's been that kind of game, can't take your eyes off it, and they're still playing. Uh, Charlton have got a third goal. Look at that as well on the video printer. Crew eight, Cheltenham one. Hat trick for Wayne Rooney. Yakuba's got one. Grant Holt today, and Joel Grant with a penalty to complete his hat trick as well. Grant, uh, crew eight, Cheltenham one. Um, Chelsea, big opportunity miss for them today. They've if it's well, well, they've roared the look today. Well, let me tell you, they should have lost. Fair, yeah. I think Stoke have won something like eight games at home, and you know they should have Stoke on chances should have won this game four or five. I think the, the, I think I think the first Chelsea... half was pretty even when it's second half. Stoke yeah. just taking the game to Chelsea. And how they're still in the game, I don't know. We're saying that the Drogba's had a, an unbelievable strike as well. It's hit the bar. On chances, though, a, they've had more chances. chances yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The, Full-time the, whistles going in the Premier yeah. League. Um, Everton against Aston Villa. Richard Ascombe. Yes, hi, Danny. It's finished two apiece just when Villa looked as though they'd turn this match around. It all went rather pear-shaped again for Gerard Houllier's side. Darren Bent cancelling out Leon Osman's opener for Everton before his 16th of the season put Villa in front. But it's never been simple for Houllier's team this season with a crucial three points within their grasp. They were snapped away, Phil Jagielka, a judge who had been brought down in the box by Jean Macoun. The touch was minimal, but either way, Leighton Baines was unerring from the spot. There was also some debate over whether a Jermaine Beckford shot had bounced over the line. What isn't open to debate is that although they've come away with a point, this will feel like a defeat for Aston Villa. It's an important point for Aston Villa, but the point that Richard was making there is about that penalty. They will feel a little bit cheated with, with Jagielka's tumble oh, in the box. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Jagielka goes in the box, McCoon comes across, Jagielka leaves his left leg, catches McCoon, goes down. It's a penalty, but the, I think it's not a penalty, it shouldn't be. Oh, there's, sorry, Suarez just missed a chance. <laughs> but um, I, I just think that it was justice in the, in the end. Whichever way it comes about... I don't yeah, think it should have been a penalty. Goal, the, the ball was over the line, and then they went straight up the other end and scored Aston Villa. So you could, <laughs> you could say, right, it's always justice, justice done. Uh, the, um, the early Suarez, game, sorry. The early, Suarez is missing chances for Liverpool. The early game in the Championship, by the way, uh, Leeds beat Forest by four goals to one. That was good news for Reading, and Millwall also won away at Hull. Reading could catch up with Nottingham Forest. They're away at, at home to Portsmouth this afternoon. Roger Johnson is at Medeski. It's finished Reading to Portsmouth, nil. Both the goals from Shane Long. The Royals into the top six for the first time since Christmas. The Irishman's opener, a 25-yard snorter. A trip by Rocha, which appeared marginally outside the box, brought the penalty for Long second. Double dismay for Pompey. Rocha was sent off. The visitors had had lots of chances before that, but their playoff aspirations are now ended as Reading go into the playoff places after beating Portsmouth by two goals to nil. Another goal at St James's Park for Steve Sutton. Which way has it gone? Yes, it's gone to Newcastle. Newcastle for Wolverhampton Wanderers won a great goal as well. A break from uh, Stephen Taylor, a second-half substitute. He ran the first half of the pitch, laid the ball off to Gutierrez. He ran the second half, cut inside the box and side-footed into the far corner of the net. Newcastle four, Wolves won. Uh, big win for Huddersfield. Um, winning 2-0 away at Tranmere. Crawley, also the leaders of the Blue Square Premier, have won and full-time at the Hawthorns for Andrew James. What a day for West Brom. What a day for Roy Hodgson. Indeed, just a little glance down from the gantry here, Dan, and you could see the courteous handshake between Roy Hodgson and uh, Kenny Dalglish. But what drama at the end. Liverpool went in front soon after the restart from Martin Skirtle's header. And uh, West Brom fought their way back with two penalties, both from Chris Brunt, the captain, both after fouls on Odin Wingy. The second of those are judged to have been a foul by goalkeeper Pepe Reina, perhaps a harsh award, but it was no more than West Brom deserved for being well set up, well laid out and well enthused. They'll be uh, thinking tonight, perhaps in the Roy Hudson household, that what goes around comes around. West Brom is Albion 2, Liverpool 1. Well, the West Brom players said they wanted to do it for their manager, and they have done it. Let's find out what happened. Um, not too far away, actually, at St Andrews. Birmingham against Bolton. Steve Lee full-time. Birmingham 2, Bolton 1. Big, big and brave win for Birmingham and their manager, Alex McLeish. Only one point since that League Cup final win over Arsenal. These three vital in their fight for survival. 
Kevin Phillips at 37 played the full 90 minutes, but it was his contribution after four minutes that really mattered. A poacher's goal from Larson's corner, his first Premier League goal of the season. Craig Gardner made it to a lovely exchange of passes with Cameron Jerome, but another gem of a volley from Johan Almander of Bolton made it a compelling finale. Two unbelievable saves in extra time from Ben Foster, who was outstanding all out, my man of the match. Birmingham 2, Bolton 1. Another hat-trick at Norwich, one for Grant Holt earlier. Also, Simeon Jackson has got another as well. So, 6-0 they've beaten Scunthorpe this afternoon. Let's find out about Chelsea, full-time at the Britannia Stadium. Stoke 1, Chelsea 1, Ivan Gaskell. Yes, uh, Stoke held on in the end as Chelsea really pushed them back to try and clinch that match-winning goal. But, you know, while the supporters here at Stoke celebrate the fact that this is their first point in Premier League history, against Chelsea. You do just wonder if the Stoke players and management might regard this as a, an opportunity missed in many ways. They really had Chelsea on the rack for long periods in the second half. It was one apiece at the break, John Walters and Didier Drogba with very contrasting but equally fine goals. But in the second half, Stoke really launched an assault on Petr Cech's goal. He was world-class at times with two absolutely first-class saves, uh, tipping the ball under the crossbar when Really, you felt he had been beaten, but he wasn't. At the other end, Drogba hit the crossbar. He hit the post, too. It was that sort of day, a wonderful examination of uh, and uh, exhibition of the Premier League at its best. But in the end, neither side, perhaps, will be entirely satisfied. 1-1. Ancelotti was not looking too happy there. Chelsea now 11 points behind Manchester United with a game in hand. The only game in the Premier League that didn't provide a goal this afternoon was watched by Harry Gratian at Wigan. Well, considering, Dan, how much was at stake, a point will be of minimum value for both sides. Wigan threw everything at the start of the second half. Gomez, Matz and Zogbier and Feverley with fine saves. And Dawson brilliantly blocks Roddy Yeager, a certain goal that. Spurs did look better when Crouch came on. One effort, well cleared. Modric started to threaten, but still no real pressure on Wigan's defence. You cannot tell me Real Madrid was not on their minds. Right at the end, a brilliant save by Gomez from Salmon denied three points for Wigan and Watson's free kick just too high. Robbie Savage has got a penalty for Derby, but all to no avail at Cardiff. And now it's three straight nil-nils for Spurs. I think they'll probably take one of those in Real Madrid uh, next week, though. Um, plenty of goals at St James's Park, though. Mick McCarthy, not the happiest manager. Steve Sutton watched Newcastle fire them in this afternoon. Yes, he's finished Newcastle 4, Wolves 1. Newcastle led by two goals to nil at half-time. Goals from skipper Kevin Nolan and Shola Amiobi. Uh, Peter Lovenkrantz made it 3-1 shortly after the start of the second half before Sylvan E. Blanks Blake gave Wolves Wolves hope to make it 3-1. Wolves had a couple of chances to pull level in that period uh, where they put Newcastle under a lot of pressure. But right at the end, Stephen Taylor, a late substitute, blocked a Wolves effort. He ran one half of the pitch, laid it off to Gutierrez. He ran the other half and coolly side-footed into the net. Newcastle ease their worries. Wolves are still deep in the relegation mire. Newcastle 4, Wolves 1. Well, those both in the Premier League, and perhaps we saw a bit of Premier League form at Carrow Road this afternoon. Six goals and two hat-tricks, watched by Robin Bailey. Yes, Norwich six, Scunthorpe nil. The Canaries flying ahead in that fight for the second automatic promotion place, hitting ten-man Scunthorpe for six. And two hat-tricks here, including earlier from Grant Holt, making it 21 for the season for him, including a penalty which saw Paul Reid sent off. And after coming on as a 70th-minute substitute, Simeon Jackson hit a hat-trick as well, including... The that obligatory injury time goal for Norwich, the sort of goal they always get. Scunthorpe equal that awful 1973 record. Nine successive away defeats for them. Relegation surely beckons, but Norwich, are they going up? Well, time for the classified football results for you now on BBC One. Here's Tim Gudgeon. And kicking off with the Premier League, Arsenal have an evening kick-off, Blackburn Rovers at 5.30. Birmingham City 2, Bolton Wanderers 1. Everton 2, Aston Villa 2. Newcastle United 4, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. Stoke City 1, Chelsea 1. West Bromwich Albion 2, Liverpool 1. West Ham United 2, Manchester United 4. Wigan Athletic 0, Tottenham Hotspur 0. In the end part championship, Bristol City 1, Doncaster Rovers 0. Burnley 1, 
Ipswich Town, two. Cardiff City, four. Derby County, one. Coventry City, two. Watford, nil. Crystal Palace, two. Barnsley, one. Hull City, nil. Millwall, one. Leeds United, four. Nottingham Forest, one. Middlesbrough, three. Leicester City, three. Norwich City, six. Scunthorpe United, nil. Preston North End, two. Swansea City, one. And Reading, two. Portsmouth, nil. In League One, Charlton Athletic, three. Leighton Orient, one. Exeter City, two. Dagenham and Redbridge, one. Notts County, nil. Oldham Athletic, two. Rochdale, two. Brighton and Hove Albion, two. Sheffield Wednesday, two. Colchester United, one. Southampton, three. Milton Keynes Dons, two. Swindon Town, one. Hartlepool United, one. Tramway Rovers, nil. Huddersfield Town, two. Yeovil Town, nil. Bristol Rovers, one. In League Two, Accrington Stanley, three. Northampton Town, one. Burton Albion, one. Barnet, four. Bury, three. Oxford United, nil. Chesterfield, two. Port Vale, nil. Crew Alexandra, eight. Cheltenham Town, one. Gillingham, nil. Hereford United, nil. Rotherham United, nil. Morecambe, one. Shrewsbury Town, four. Macclesfield Town, one. Southend United, nil. Aldershot Town, nil. Stevenage, two. Bradford City, one. Torquay United, two. Lincoln City, nil. And Wickham Wanderers, two. Stockport County, nil. In the Blue Square Premier, AFC Wimbledon, two. Barrow, nil. Altrincham, two. Cambridge United, two. Bath City, one. Gateshead, nil. Crawley Town, one. Darlington, nil. Fleetwood Town, two. Tamworth, one. Histon, nil. Forest Green Rovers, three. Kettering Town, one. York City, one. Kidderminster, three. Luton Town, three. Mansfield Town, two. Rushton and Diamonds, one. Newport County, two. Grimsby Town, one. Southport, one. Eastbourne Borough, three. Wrexham, nil. Hayes and Yetting United, two. In the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League, Inverness Caledonian Thistles match with Celtic was postponed. Waterlogged pitch. Motherwell, two. Aberdeen, one. Rangers, two. Dundee United, three. St Johnston, nil. Kilmarnock, nil. And St Mirren, three. Hamilton Academical, one. In the Arnborough Scottish Division, one. Gowdenbeath, nil. Dunfermline Athletic, one. Greenock Morton, two. Falkirk, two. Partick Thistle, nil. Green of the South, nil. Wraith Rovers, two. Dundee, one. Sterling Albion, nil. Ross County, two. And in Scottish Div, two. Air United, one. East Fife, one. Dumbarton, two. Alloa Athletic, two. Vorfra Athletic, one. Stonehouse Muir, one. Livingston, nil. Brecon City, nil. And Peterhead, two. Airdrie United, four. And Scottish Div, three. Albion Rovers, three. Arbroath, nil. Allen Athletic, one. Clyde, nil. East Stirlingshire, three. Queen's Park, two. Montrose, one. Elgin City, nil. Stranra, three. Berwick Rangers, one. In the Welsh Premier, Airbus UK, Rawton, nil. Carmarthen Town, nil. This is her latest score. Haverford West, one. Newtown, four. And for Talbot Town, nil. The New Saints, nil. Well, let's bring you up to date with the way the tables look tonight then. In the Premier League, Manchester United pulled off that great escape at West Ham. Now lead by eight points. That cranks the pressure up on Arsenal. They host Blackburn in the late kick-off in the Premier League. Chelsea held at Stoke, which means Manchester City can move above them if they beat Sunderland tomorrow. At the bottom, Wigan earned a draw against Tottenham, but there's still a point adrift at the foot of the table. Wolves drop a place to 19th after their defeat today. West Ham slip back into the relegation zone after throwing away that 2-0 lead at home to the leaders, Manchester United. And Birmingham were second to bottom this morning, but their win over Bolton means they rise up to 14th, which shows you how tight it all is in the Champions Championship. The leaders QPR play Sheffield United on Monday at Loftus Road. Their nearest challenge is Norwich. 6-0 win for them today, boosting their hopes. The Canaries now four points clear of third place Cardiff. 
A big win for them over Derby though today. Swansea slipped to fourth. They lost at Preston. Leeds hit four to boost their promotion. Bid, Basta, Nottingham Forest and Reading have replaced Forest in the top six. Scunthorpe at the bottom slipped to the foot of the table after being thrashed by the Canaries today. And not a good start for manager Alan Nil. Big task on his hands. A Preston's third straight win sees them move off the bottom. They're still eight points from safety, though, so a big few weeks ahead for them. Sheffield United play the leaders' QPR on Monday night. They're now seven points from safety following Palace's win over Barnsley. In League One, leaders Brighton were held by Rochdale today. Still a massive 11 clear, though, with the game in hand. Huddersfield consolidated their grasp on the other automatic promotion spot with a win at Tranmere. Southampton won and move up to third at the expense of Peterborough, who drew with Bournemouth last night. Uh, Plymouth at the bottom don't play today, so they stay at the foot of the table. Uh, Swindon earned a point against Hartlepool to move two points clear of Argyle, but they've played two games more as well, as you can see. And Bristol Rovers stay third from bottom despite winning. They're now level on points with Warsaw, who didn't play today. Uh, the top five all won today in League Two. Uh, Chesterfield 11 points clear of Wickham at the top after beating Port Vale 2-0. Shrewsbury occupy the third automatic promotion spot. They beat Macclesfield 4-1. Comprehensive victory for them today. Berry, Stevenage, Torquay and Gillingham are the teams currently in the playoff places. And at the foot of League Two, uh, Stockport three points adrift at the bottom. Uh, they lost, as we've already told you, to Wickham. But what a result for Barnet. 4-1 win over Burton means they're now only two points behind uh, Paul Poscasolido's side, although they have played three games more. Uh, Blue Square Premier, uh, Crawley maintain their 13-point huge lead for them. 1-0 win over Darlington today. Nearest challengers, AFC Wimbledon, also beat Barrow. Uh, the biggest movers at the bottom are Hayes and Yedding. Out of the relegation zone, up to 19th after a surprise victory at Wrexham. Histon continue to prop up the rest. They're beaten 3-0 uh, by fellow strugglers, Forest Green Rovers, this afternoon. And in the SBL, Celtics game at Inverness was called off because of a waterlogged pitch, but Rangers couldn't take advantage. Walter Smith's side lost at home to Dundee United. They're now two points behind their great rivals. Hearts beat Hibernian, um, Hearts, sorry, meet Hibernian tomorrow in the Edinburgh Derby. I'm sure they take a win. I've already given them. Uh, St Mirren came from behind to win the bottom of the table clash with Hamilton. Uh, that defeat leaves the Ackies nine points adrift at the foot of the table, having played a game more than their rivals. All right, let's bring you all the headlines then today in the Barclays Premier Didier Drogba's goal earns Chelsea a point at Stoke, but the Blues are now 11 behind Manchester United. Chris Brunt's penalty double gives West Brom a crucial win against Liverpool, who led through Martin Skirtle's header. Goals today from Kevin Phillips and Craig Gardner mean the Blues lift themselves out of the bottom three in the Premier League. It finished two apiece at Goodison Park. Darren Bent strikes twice, but Leon Osman and a late Leighton Baines penalty means it's a share of the points today. Convincing win for the Magpies at St James's Park. Goals from Kevin Nolan, Shola Amiobi, Peter Lovenkrantz and Jonas Gutierrez as well. The only goalless game in the top division at the DW Stadium. Wigan remained bottom, while Spurs now turn their attentions to Real Madrid on Tuesday. see all the action and reaction and talking points in the company of Gary and the two Allens from 10.20 tonight on Match of the Day. And Mark Chapman then picks up the baton for the Football League show at 11.45. A few beauties and some glaring misses there for you as well. And don't forget highlights from the Cricket World Cup final as India played Sri Lanka in Mumbai today. And there are two games tomorrow on Match of the Day too. Fulham play Blackpool and it's Manchester City against Sunderland as well. Let's pick up on one of the big stories of the day because Chelsea missed the opportunity to uh, close the gap or even pick up on uh, Manchester United and Arsenal above them in the Premier League. A 1-1 draw for them at Stoke, watched by Simon Brotherton for us today. And Simon, do we, do we think now that that is title hopes over for uh, Carlo Ancelotti's side? Yes, I think so, Dan. I mean, they've only got seven matches left now, haven't they, Chelsea? I think their faint hopes of retaining the title were extinguished with this draw. But from a neutral point of view, it was an absolutely smashing game, particularly the second half. And to be honest, it could have gone either way. We had two really good goals in the first period. Firstly, Jonathan Walters putting Stoke ahead inside the first 10 minutes. And then a cracking diving header from Didier Drogba. Uh, incidentally, that was created by Nicholas and Elka. Those two preferred to Fernando Torres and Solomon Kalou today. They were both on the bench and came on in the second half 
But in that second period, Stoke City uh, smacked the Chelsea crossbar twice. Chelsea hit the woodwork twice at the other end. And then in the last knockings of the game, Ricardo Fuller, who'd just come on as a substitute, uh, with his very first touch, had a header at the far post. And I still don't know how he missed. Well, uh, thank you for that, Simon. And uh, Chelsea now having almost, as, as Simon said, probably have to concede 11. the Premier League. Mm. Massive game in the Champions League where they take on Manchester United next Wednesday in the first league well, of that just game. Seen the, I thought we saw the vulnerability of Manchester United in the first half against West Ham. And I think when they all look at each other's DVDs, they'll see plus points and minus. But I just think that Chelsea are a team capable over two games of beating Manchester United in the Champions League. We thought, uh, saw Carl Ancelotti thoroughly unhappy at the end of that one. I think he knows the significance of today's game, yeah, doesn't he? I, yeah, he was, he was having a long chat with the referee mm. as he walked off the pitch. We don't really know mm. what it was for. I mean, I, you know, I think they were lucky to get away with a point today. Stoke had so many chances. They hit the crossbar a couple of times. Pet the Czech pulled off some brilliant saves to yeah. keep him in it. Um, yes, they had chances at the other end, but I think you know overall Stoke, Stoke dominated the game. And let's get some uh, post-match reaction from the early game in the Premier League where Manchester United beat West Ham from Ryan Giggs and uh, Avram Grant as well, talking to John Watson. Did you feel at one point in the, f in the first half, in addition to the two penalties, that uh, Vidic was in danger of getting a red card? Um, yeah, I mean, it was one of them where they'd both gone up for the ball and tangled, and to be fair, I think the, the referee could have given it either way. You know, it went against us, but, you know, obviously we're happy to, to, to just see V to get the, the yellow card. And the man who turned the game, I suppose, more than anybody else, Wayne Rooney, there's been a few articles written about, is he still as good as he used to be? Was that, was that a little bit of evidence today? Yeah, I mean, his touch for the, I think, second goal was, was brilliant and finish. Um, I mean, he's just capable of turning games on its head, and that's what he's done today. His, his movement, his touch, um, his finishing was, was brilliant. <laughs> I think... Uh... We, we, was play, we played very well the first, first half, we looked, we were looking hard very well, but then in the second half, I don't know why, we gave them too much space to play. And when they have space, they know how to play, and they play, they pass the ball and they scored, they, uh, you know, scored go four goals, so we are very, dis very disappointed. There is something about Manchester United, isn't there? I mean, you can never really count them out. Yes, because they have so much quality, so always, uh, you know, they can do something. Uh, sometimes it's for free kicks, sometimes it's penalty, sometimes it's like uh, the goals that they score. They have a lot of quality, so you need to defend very good against them. Let's touch on a couple of other significant results today. You want to talk about West Bromwich yes. Albion, because Roy Hodgson said before this game that, you know, there were, there were legends, the shadows of legends at Liverpool that, that affected his time at the club, but, it, but he's, he's done it today and he's, he's yeah, beaten his old team. It would have been a result he would want, wouldn't he? Obviously, to get West Brom out from the relegation area, 2-1 um, win, I thought that, you know, it was a very bitty game. I thought Andrew Carroll was very lucky to stay on the pitch and uh, two penalties. One debatable, but you know, was dispatched by Brunt very well. And I think it's a game. It's a it's a game for for Roy Hodgson, which I think he feels some sort of animosity towards. Uh, well, he said he doesn't, but I think it's a, a really important game for him to win and for West Brom to climb up to 12. And one or two other crucial results out there today as well, Gary Pallister, for, for some of the teams down the bottom and those yeah, sort of was, trying yeah. to make sure that this isn't the season where they where they struggle with well, relegation. Right, you're looking at all the, all the sides. Of the, well, there's so many teams involved in the relegation battle it's incredible but I was looking you know closely at the Newcastle Wolves game and you know Newcastle on a, on a run of bad form Wolves coming into one on, on decent form and I thought it might be a tough game for Newcastle they ended up 4-1 winners and cruiser I thought you know looking at Wolves today they, they look really poor at the back Newcastle scored four they could have, could have scored seven and eight really disappointing from Mick McCarthy's boys guys thanks for the moment uh, nearly time for us to finish here on BBC One there's still 45 minutes of reaction and chat here to go on final score press your red button right now you can stay with us all the way through until six o'clock after us flick on your wireless to five live Robbie Savage will be uh, showered ready to go for 606 at the Cardiff City Stadium it's not a penalty today but his side did lose uh, he's always well worth a listen don't forget press your red button and you'll see us on the other side but from all of us it's been a good weekend goodbye